are paper buttons that I can use to play Minecraft. Now for our controls, we have our space, we have W, A, S, D, and E for inventory. Um, I also have control, shift, and escape in the case that we wanted to pause the game. Now my friend Nolan helped me out with this a ton when I posted my paper button tutorial. We both kind of had the same idea to turn the buttons into actual functional buttons. So he tried it out first and it actually ended up working surprisingly well. It's actually a lot less glitchy than I thought. Um, I thought there'd be some kind of latency or just the buttons would stick, but it's it's actually pretty smooth. Now if we take a look inside here, there's a lot of wires, but there's also a microcontroller. And that is connected to each button via a crazy nest of wires. Now each button is spring-loaded, but that alone isn't going to tell the computer that the button is being pressed. But if we have some kind of conductive surface and a wire that's also connected to the microcontroller, then we can tell when the button's being pressed. So knowing that, if we have a paperclip that's shorter than the spring itself, when we press the button, the paperclip will touch the aluminum foil, and that's how the computer will know that the button has been pressed. Anyway, here's how I made it. So I started out with an Arduino compatible microcontroller and soldered all the pins into the holes. And then I stripped one of my wires, soldering it to my aluminum foil and plugged the end of my wire into the ground pin. As you can see here, the microcontroller is going to be in this open space on the button board. Next, I built my buttons, which my friend Nolan, who was the one who guided me through this whole project, had the genius idea to use paper clips. I bent them so the ends of the wires would kind of tension fit with the paper clip, and then I soldered those together. Then I went ahead and designed and printed my own custom template. Here I am collapsing the box. And then I started to glue on the little crowns of each box, similar to my waffle box design. This time I had a few different shapes like the circle button and the rectangular space bar as well. This next part might seem familiar to some of you. Here I am folding a square origami button. I copied a similar crease pattern for the other buttons and made a template for those creases. And I specifically chose and grouped different colors to differentiate the movement keys from the rest of the board. I also neglected to add a drop button because half the time I use that button, it's not intentional and I'll lose inventory by accident. I also just couldn't fit it. So I don't know, sue me. Anyway, then I added an extra layer to the buttons before hot gluing the paper clip contraption in, as well as the spring. This was just in case I ever wanted to change the color of the button or say one of my buttons got really dirty. That way I'm not gluing directly onto the button and it's not permanent. Then I put all of my wired buttons into the button box and proceeded to plug all of my wires into their designated pins. I glued all but the bottom side of the box, which I instead secured with double-sided tape for easier access to the inside. Off camera, I had some trouble fitting everything inside the box, so I kind of had to go crazy with hot gluing the wires and the microcontroller in place, as well as bending all the paper clips because I realized they were all just a little bit too tall. I plugged it into my computer, and Nolan helped me a ton with the code since I'd never coded on Arduino before, but it was actually pretty straightforward. I just had to tell the computer which buttons were plugged into which pins and what keyboard button they were representing. I do tend to work a bit too quickly, so I kept missing semicolons in my code and wondering why it wasn't compiling, but eventually, with some help from Nolan again, we got it to work. I want to give another huge thanks to Nolan for guiding me through this whole project, especially considering I've never done anything like this before. You guys should totally check him out. He's a cool guy with some really cool content. I'll tag him below. This was a super cool project, and I think it turned out pretty neat.